Hello YouTube. I know it's been a while since we've been here together. Uh, Joe Fisher, your friendly neighborhood Manskirt Brewer. And uh, welcome back. A lot's changed here since you've last been in the brewery. I'll uh, post a little video on all of the changes that have happened and maybe some upcoming changes. But today I have something for the tech geeks out there. Uh, we are going to break down my heat exchanger. And uh, some home brewers are familiar with plate chillers or heat exchangers, as we like to call them here, because they exchange heat. And uh, I thought you'd like to see what's inside mine. So I'm going to turn the camera around for you. Boop. I think. Nope, that was not the right button. Hold, please. All right, here we are back at our front-facing camera. So this beautiful device here is my heat exchanger. And basically what happens is the hot boiling sugar water, the wort from the boil kettle, gets pumped into there. It goes up and down all of the channels in these plates. These plates are cooled by water. This second stage, this little baby stage here, is cooled by glycol, which comes from those pipes which go to a chiller on the roof through that wall right there. And then it comes out that valve there and then goes over to one of the four fermenters. So basically, boiling wort goes in, cold wort comes out. I can get this down to about 55 uh, depending on the groundwater temperatures. This is where the water comes in here. You can see we've got a little charcoal filter over there. Hackettstown water is really nice for brewing, so I don't do much with it other than a charcoal filter. And yeah, so I'm going to take this little bad boy apart today because I managed to clog it solid with hops, uh, which if you've ever used a heat exchanger, I'm sure you can relate to that. And uh, we'll get going in a few minutes. First order of business is getting everything unhooked and getting it out where I can work on it. I don't know if anybody's curious about that part. Can't really read it, sorry. But that tells us when we put it back together, we have to tighten up the nuts over here on these long stainless steel bolts. We have to tighten these nuts evenly so that the plate compresses the stack to a certain thickness. Uh, you can see over here, beer wort import it has a lot of hop junk in it so that's why we're doing this all the side pieces and parts are in there we're gonna put a little bit of hot water and caustic cleaner in there uh, basically like a powdered brewery wash style of caustic cleaner and uh, get things cleaned up and start opening this bad boy up here is the tool well I mean here's the tool but here's the other tool that we're going to be using. All right, gang, I'm going to see how well I can do this one-handed. I have loosened up all of the nuts. You can see that the stack is much wider than when we started. There's all sorts of water dripping out. So the way this works is it's got these little bushings here that sit in holes, so you can just slide these big bolts out. So we'll do that real quick. I'm gonna start a new YouTube channel. We're gonna call this the left-handed mechanic uh, because the right hand is always holding the camera. one of the fun parts about owning and operating a small brewery, getting to do all this fun maintenance yourself and play with these neat toys. Uh-oh. Okay. Let's, let's see if this works. Oh, look at that. It's an accordion. Mm. Yum. So, you can see that there are gaskets to keep the 
water channels separate from the work channels. And this was, the reason that this is so filthy is because it was clogged so badly. Sorry, maybe you can't hear with my hand over the microphone. The reason that this is so dirty is because it was clogged badly enough that I couldn't even run cleaner through it. I couldn't get any liquid to pass through it. So at some point, these channels got completely plugged up. So I bought a filter, a pre-filter, that I'm gonna start using to try to prevent that. But you can see, wort, water, wort, water, yada, 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 all the way down. So I have to clean out all of these channels, each of these plates individually, uh, without making too much of a mess. And then we can start putting it back together. And when you put it back together, you have to make sure all of these gaskets are properly in the channels. There's a little lip, they get hooked onto the side here. It's kind of hard to see. But there's like a little, a little finger on there. See the little finger? And that gets hooked into the little, the pleat, I guess you would say, the corrugation. And then we'll do the same thing over here for the, this is the glycol side of things. Uh, right now everything's kind of stuck in place so I have to open it all up. One more quick peek for you while this whole thing's apart. So this is a two-stage heat exchanger. And the first stage is the water stage, like we were talking about before, media one in. So the water goes in here, and then this side is blocked off. There's gonna be a, a plate against here with a closed face. So the water is gonna go this way, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down the plates. It's gonna come out down there. I don't have the tube in yet and it goes back to the hot liquor tank where we capture the hot water for reuse later. And then on this side, you remember we had that, just a few plates here. So that's media two, which is our glycol. So the glycol goes in there, goes up and down the plates, comes back around and comes back out the front and then goes back up those tubes to the glycol chiller on the roof. And this is the beer outlet here or the word. All right, be right back. After painstakingly aligning each gasket and making sure that each plate was put back in the correct orientation, this is what we're left with. I put the bolts back on and now it's time to start tightening them up. We have to tighten them down to about seven and five eighths inches according to the front plate. Right now, we are at nine and a half inches, so we have to compress this stack about two inches along here. And you can see from the, uh, the anti seize on there, that's where the nut was last time. So, we got a little work to do. The nuts have to be tightened up in a star pattern, much like uh, putting a wheel back on a car or tightening down a head if you're an engine guy. 
because you don't want to warp the plates and uh, prevent everything from sealing properly. So I'm going to get going on that and I'll be back when I'm a little closer to done. And here we are all back together. The plates are compressed down to seven and seven eighths inches, which is right uh, in the range that we want. So now I just have to pressure test it and put it back into service.